Hey guys and gals, this is a series RLC um, module test problem. That's a good one that I thought I would share with you guys. Okay, so this is some information that was given to me in the circuit. It says you have a capacitor in series with a coil. Okay, the capacitor has a capacitance rating of 58 microfarads. Um, power factor of the circuit is 0.77 and it's lagging. So when I see that the po overall power factor is lagging, that right away I go, well, that means my XL is going to be greater than my XC. Supply voltage is 120 volts, 60 hertz of frequency, and my incoming current, line current, is 12.6 amps. And they want me to find the XL of the coil, okay? So I'm going to start here with two sets of triangles. I'll draw the third if I need to. So I'm gonna do an impedance triangle for a capacitor. Capacitors are always pure, straight line, XC. I'm gonna add that vectorally to the um, full triangle of my coil. I have a resistive component, I have an inductive component, so R coil, unless they state that your coil is pure, which they never will once you get into RLC because it's not realistic. And then I'm gonna have my Z coil and then my overall total. I'm going to draw my circuit total in the upright direction because they told me the overall circuit power factor is lagging. Okay, so that's gonna look like this. Okay, and then my voltage triangle would be the same, VXC plus voltage triangle for my coil. So VR coil, VXL, V coil, and then my circuit voltage triangle. So this would be VR total, VXL, E total. So supply voltage, this would be R total, XT total, and impedance total. Okay, so current is given to me. I'm just gonna put in the information that I do have. I know my supply voltage is 120 volts. That is the hypotenuse of my circuit voltage triangle. Okay. Um, I might as well draw the power because I can see that I have something to go there. So I'm going to go um, QXC plus PR coil, QXL, S coil, and that'll give me a circuit total like this. So PR total, QXT, and then S total. I have the current, I have the voltage, so I can simply take voltage times current and that will give me my apparent power for the circuit. It's easy, it's there, why not do it? So if I go 120 volts times 12.6, I can't encourage enough to get a photocopy of that um, sheet that I shared in series resistive um, S, um, the RL and the RC circuits where I show the relationships, by all means use it. 120 times 12.6 equals 15, 1,512 VA. All right, I need to take this capacitance and convert it into capacitive reactance because that is the variable that um, opposes current flow. So let's do that. Again, I have no room, I hate this board, but let's find a space. I'll write on the wall if I have to. Let's just remove this for a moment and do XC. So the formula for XC is one all over two pi FC. Capacitors are rated in microfarads because a farad is a very large unit of measurement. So I'm going to find that out. So I'm going to go one divided by two times pi. Frequency was given, 60 hertz of frequency times 58, 58 times exponent negative six gives me, let's see, so I like to do the bottom part first and then I just inverse it. So two times pi times 60 times 58 exponent negative six equals inverse that. I have an XC of 45.73 four ohms, okay? So get rid of this, put Z back up there. So by this point, you certainly should be comfortable with using your capacitive reactance formula as well as your inductive reactance formula. Okay, what else do I have? Well, I have current 
And I ultimately, what am I looking to find? I'm looking to find the XL of this, okay? So I can start looking at moving down. I can figure out my VXC, okay? Um, let's do that. So, oh, I'm, I'm almost forgetting a very important piece of the pie here. They told me that my circuit power factor was 0.77. Power factor is, uh, is the relationship between uh, your cosine, essentially, your adjacent, your hypotenuse, or, or it's, the, it's the vectoral sum of true power and apparent power for the circuit. So if I have a 0.77 lag here, that power factor is very important information, okay? So I can figure out what the volt drop is across the resistive portion being that I have the hypotenuse of this triangle. I can also figure out what the power is because I have the apparent power. So a mistake that everyone seems to be making is that they'll go 120 times the cosine of 0.77 and that isn't accurate. You wanna go 120 volts times 0.77 and that will give you your VRT. And if you get a higher number than your hypotenuse, you've probably punched something incorrectly into your calculator. So 120 times 0.77 equals 92.4 volts. Okay. And then if I want my V, I got XL wrote down. It's VXT because that is the net reactance between, right? So it's it's, it's more correct to say VXT there, even though we know it's lagging, okay? So I wanna figure out what my VXT is. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean, 120 volts squared, subtract 92.4 volts squ uh, squared. Okay, again, you should be very comfortable with performing that as in your calculator. Equals second function square root, 76.565. I like to go three decimal places. Again, rounding can affect your overall answer, okay? So I want to take my XC now and figure out what my VXC is so I can start figuring out the coil information so I can ultimately solve my XL. This is a really hard question. Okay, so to go from XC to VXC, it's just Ohm's law, you times it by your current, right? Current is the link between your triangles. So 45.734 times 12.6 amps equals, I have a volt drop of 576.248 volts, okay? So, interestingly enough, I have my VRT, the in-phase volt drop of the circuit at 92.4 volts. I know my capacitor is pure. That means it has no variable of resistance in it. So whatever volt drop I have for the resistor here is also the volt drop of here because in phase loads are um, additive together, right? So whatever this is, is this. So the only variable of resistance volt drop in this circuit is here. So whatever's here would then go to your total. So we're just working backwards a little bit here. Now, I have 576.248 volt drop across the capacitor. I have a VXT of 76.565 lagging. Remember in the beginning I said when you have an overall lagging power factor, that's an indicator that XL is larger than XC. So my XL has to be bigger than that. So this plus this will give me this, okay? So 576, right? Because this was the hint, it's lagging. So this is 76.565 volts lagging. That would get added to that. So 576.248 plus 76. 0.565 equals a VXL of 652.813 volts, okay? VXL and VXC are 180 degrees apart, okay?
okay? So we are able to take this lagging reactants or volt drop reactants and add it to this VXC, okay? So that is the answer to the question. Oh, no, it's not. That's just my VXL. One more step. Sorry, guys, I was getting really excited there. Um, not to ruin the moment, we're looking for this. We have this, right? So when we're going from here to down to here, it's all multiply current. When you're working backwards, it's you're dividing by current, okay? So I would just take my VXL and I would divide that by current and that will give me my XL of my inductor. So 652.813 8.13 divided by 12.6 gives me 51.81 ohms. Okay, and that is the oh 51. Oh my God, guys, so sorry. Let's just kind of recap what I just did there. 652.81. 652.813 divided by current, which is 12.6, gives me 51.811 ohms, okay? Feel free to go through this video as slowly as you need to. This is definitely as hard as it gets, okay? Thank you.